American capitalist on the news the other day, I can't remember his name now, but he said, we are heading for the biggest crash in our lifetime, the biggest financial global crash in our lifetime. Bigger than 2008? Bigger than 2008, bigger than everything we've seen since Wall Street 1929. The crisis of capitalism is a global, global crisis, it is a profitability crisis. The system is struggling to make a profit. This is why, from the point of view of the capitalists, austerity is an absolute necessity. They're cutting back because they are running out of money. Their profits are falling all the time. And this is because of the decaying nature of capitalism. We have to get this concept into popular consciousness and we have to believe that everyone is intelligent enough to understand it. And that's why I'm talking about it, because I think the people of this country are intelligent enough to understand it. Capitalism, no matter who is in control of it, is decaying. The crisis will continue to deepen. We are heading for a massive, massive crash. We absolutely need to... We are facing mass proletarianization across the world, right? I don't know when this is going to happen, but it is going to happen. You know, all you really need to know about... I know a lot of people here know this already, but it's important that people who don't know are also educated and enlightened because they're being denied this information and it's not right. You know, all you really need to know about capitalism is that the rate of profit tends to fall. You know, that's... So after the World War II, we had a, a productivity boom, which raised the living standards for almost everyone in this country and Europe and America to a level that wasn't enjoyed in the global south and in country, other oppressed countries like Ireland. So in 1960s, we had 5.4% growth across the richest nations in the world. In the 70s, that dropped to 3.6%. In the 80s, that dropped to 3.2%. In the 90s, that dropped to 2.7%. In the 2000s, that profit rate dropped to 1.7%. Every decade, the profit rate is falling by nearly a percent. We are heading for permanent negative growth. And last time we were in these conditions was the 1910s. So that's how serious this is. It's not nice to think about, but we've got to face up to reality. These are the material conditions. If you want to get one of these leaflets that shows this very clearly and simply, come over, we've got a leaflet giving it away. Uh, thanks very much, come and have a conversation. Thank you. Thank you. I, just need, I just want to say though, it's very important to defend Corbyn from the right from Liberals and from in the in the in the part in the Labour Party and from the Tory Party. That's very important. But it's also important to see what he's not doing from a left-wing perspective. You know, such as councils no. uh, cutting services, such as his capitulations to to the Israel lobby in the Labour Party. That sort of thing. We've still got to talk about that sort of thing because it is open debate, and this is why we have an open microphone. You know, when you go to a Labour Party rally, they don't offer m open microphones, but open debate is how we we'll make progress. Thank you very much. Thank you to the previous speaker. Thank you. He's right. Capitalism doesn't work. It's been proven that capitalism doesn't work. The difference is, everybody at this rally is here because they care. I can't even vote yet. I can't vote until December. And I've never been in London in my life. It's a world away from the seaside northern town where I live. But I'm here because we stand in solidarity and we care about the people. The same people that Jeremy Corbyn cares about. You know, from the perspective of, of thousands and thousands of people in this country, Jeremy Corbyn is a far-left communist. And from, we, can, we know that he's not. We know that his policies are common sense and they're commonplace throughout Europe, throughout the developed socialist countries. We stand with the people that Jeremy Corbyn cares about. He, it's not about what, he's, what he maybe can't do, it's not about what he's failing to do, it's what he stands for. He cares about the people that this government are letting down. He cares about the people who were killed in that fire. He knows that that was indirectly murder. 
from our government and to, to stand behind somebody in government who cares, who sees what's going on and thinks we can't stand for this. It never happens, it never happens. And to think that it never happens, it's shocking. But it doesn't, and we need to do everything we can to make it better. We're not going to make it perfect. We can never make it perfect. We, we might have, we, who knows we might have a revolution in 50 years' time. All we can do is try. And yeah, I've been dead by the way. Uh, before 50 years, before you know, I can, hopefully I can still walk. We do need socialism in this country and we yes. might not get it immediately, but we're, we're, we're getting there and we will get there. And I do believe in that and I do believe capitalism is on its way out. I believe that we can get there and Jeremy Corbyn is a step forward. He's a step in the right direction and I personally think he's a fantastic human being and a fantastic politician. Okay, thank you. Yay! Thank you very much. Round of applause for the previous speaker. Socialism is possible. Another world is possible. Yeah, so I agree with part of the message of what the last speaker said about how socialism is not only possible, but it's also necessary if the needs of working class people, of regular people, of everybody is going to be met. That can only happen under socialism. Now, there seems to be this disconnect where people recognise that and then they're kind of asking this question about how do we get there and I fundamentally disagree that asking for them to hand socialism down to us is going to happen it's never happened in the past it's never happened, it never will, it can't happen what is missing from this conversation is about working class people organising ourselves to solve our own problems I am not prepared to wait however many years until the guy in the jumper or whoever else it is next time gets in as a Labour government and him to solve my problems for me. I know people who, who cannot wait that long. There are people who cannot wait for a Labour government to not solve their problems because the Labour government never has. It's a Labour government that accepted the IMF loan in the 1970s that kicked off the era of austerity and neoliberalism. It is a Labour government that launched the Iraq war. It is a Labour government that introduced PFI. Even the most lauded Labour government in existence, the 1945 to 51 Attlee government, only was able to provide what it provided through plundering the rest of the world. Slave labour camps were set up in Malaysia to mine tin and to, to harvest rubber to pay for this, to pay for the NHS. Now I'm not, I am all for the NHS. I'm all for the NHS. And what you'll see with a crisis in this capitalist system is it is being undermined. Now, where do we look for to solve the problems? Where do we look to to provide health care for working class people? Well, we look to ourselves. Yeah? They're not going to hand the solution to us. We can see it. Grenfell. While all these politicians are running around trying to blame everybody else, the people at Grenfell are organising to solve the problems. The people that we need to have faith in is the working class. We can't sit around until somebody solves our problem for us. Right? And this is what Jeremy Corbyn in reality represents. If you look, action against austerity has gone backwards since he became leader of the Labour Party. Because everybody is saying, the left is saying, stand around and wait for him to solve it for you. Well, the people being kicked out of their houses by a Labour council all across London can't wait for Jeremy Corbyn to get back in and give them the council housing that's no longer going to exist because Lendlease have sold it off, right? So this is the message. We don't need them to hand it to us, right? This is this classic British kind of doffing my cap to our betters kind of thing. We don't need that. The people of this country are clever enough, are, you know, or we could be organised enough, we're good enough to run our own lives. And I'm not prepared to sit around and wait for somebody to hand it to me. We need to organise, we need to fight, because we're the only people who actually consistently stand for our own interests. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's go. Hi, I am. I'm Adele. I got a tattoo last week of Jeremy Corbyn and the BBC contacted me and I was on Daily Politics on whatever day it was, Thursday. Now this is bizarre to me. I've never voted in my life until Jeremy Corbyn came forward. I never felt that there was a genuine politician for me to get behind. Well, I've met Jeremy Corbyn three times now. He's a genuine, decent, fucking human being, and I've told him this. And I said, do you know what, thank you, Jeremy, for just being a decent human being. He said, do you know what, you're welcome. He believes 
It's not about banishing words about socialism, capitalism, communism. It's about being, being decent to people caring about human beings, realizing we are all the same. We, you know, I am so privileged to be white and to be born into this country. I could have been born anywhere. I understand how privileged I am. What gives me the right to eat? What gives me the right to drink clean water? Who do I think I am? Everybody has the right to have a decent standard of living. And I am for human beings. End of. Thank you very much. Open microphone. Okay, thanks guys. I'll be Welcome back shortly. Welcome to speak on this microphone organized by the Revolutionary Communist Group. We're interested in discussing the crisis, the crisis of capitalism and okay. what role both of these political parties are playing in this crisis. It has to be said, there's an interesting and relevant issue that the Labour Party bombed Iraq and Afghanistan for 10 years at the cost of over a million people's lives. I don't feel like I can stand here and say I support that party that murdered those people who are equal to me and my own daughter. I don't think anyone really wants to say that, but I'm saying it here that the people of Afghanistan, Iraq, Palestine, Libya, Asia, Africa, Latin America, their lives are all worth the same to me. And I can't stand here and support a political party that has taken part in their murder for generations, despite if there's been a change at the top. What is the change down below in that party, really? When the ruling class decided they wanted to bomb Syria, the opportunity was presented to the Labour Party under Jeremy Corbyn to whip his MPs against that bombing and he failed to do that. Now I'm not asking for anybody to be perfect, but I know if I was in that position, what I would do, I would stand unconditionally with the people of the Middle East over a bag of capitalists sitting in Westminster and the city of London until my blood spills i will stand with those people of palestine and syria and iraq and afghanistan and the kurdish people which corbyn has said he would do and he has done in the past but now he's at the top you have to ask why did he not whip the mps to vote against the bombing of Syria. I'm angry. I'm fucking angry. I'm not gonna zip it. Don't tell me to zip it. Don't tell me to zip it, comrade. Comrade, don't tell me to zip it. The people of Syria, if they were here, of Afghanistan and Iraq, they wouldn't zip it. They wouldn't zip it. The people of Palestine and Kurdistan, they don't zip it. They don't zip it. They come out on the streets and they fight for their rights and they stand in the front line where the bombs are dropping and the blood is spilling. As I said, under both political parties, that has happened. We've got a very serious dilemma in this country. That is, there is massive support for this political party that have carried out these things. I'm not trying to attack you as individuals and what you may feel is a right principle and a wrong principle about human life. 
But I'm saying to you, you have to think about these things when we fight the ruling class in all its shapes and forms. Whether it is wearing a red tie, a blue tie, or it is a pinstripe suit in the city of London. The ruling class has many shapes and forms and it adopts many interesting positions in this country to appeal to the interests of the City of London and that is what is primarily a concern for them when they roll out their economic policy. I live in a Labour council, it's called Lewisham. In Lewisham, they haven't built any council houses for 30 years. That's not excusable. If they had built 5,000 or 10,000, I'd say, okay, they're doing something. But they're not. They haven't built any in 30 years. That's my experience. That's my experience. Where did I grow up? I grew up where Grenfell happened, Kensington and Chelsea. That was my estate there. I didn't see one Labour MP in my life. I didn't see one Labour school in the street in my life. I didn't see one Labour supporter come to my youth club in my life. I didn't vote until ever. Nobody even talked to me about politics. And this is the understanding of the majority of working class people in this country. Or they just go to the poll booth and they make up their mind, they don't know the difference, they say, oh, one's strong on the economy, I don't know, one's tough on immigration, I don't know. They both sound very similar in many of the elections we've had. And this is the political experience that I'm coming from. And we have to put all these things in our minds when we suddenly see there is a change at the top of a couple of people, but no change in reality on the ground. How many new people signed up to the Labour Party? How many people signed up to Momentum? 300,000 in Momentum. Where are they today? The Momentum 300,000? I don't know, because they're not in my borough doing anything. I'm sorry, I'm just sorry. They're not in Lewisham, they're not in Southwark, they're not in Lambeth. They're not fighting the Southwark Council because they want to zip it, they want to hold it down. They don't want to speak out. In North London against the Harringay Development Vehicle, Certain groups said they're not going to criticise the council because it's Labour and it's election time. Come on, man. Come on. Whose interests are first? Working class people or a ruling class political party that to this point has not represented our interests? Come on. This is the real experience that we live and deal with across this country. As I said before, this is an open microphone. If you want, you can come and use it. If it's your first time, don't be scared. Just use the microphone. Do you want to speak? Welcome. What I'd like to say is, this Tory government isn't only about people. It's also about the animals. They're trying to repeal the Hunting Act. They're trying to cull badges. It's outrageous. Just remember, meat is the Tory government. They own land. And if you're eating meat on a regular basis, you're lining their pockets. This is start with what is on your plate, what is on your feet, what is what are you wearing, where are you buying your stuff? Everything counts. Please have some sympathy and empathy and compassion for the animals. Thank you. You're welcome, thank you. Hello everybody, um, my name's Laura, I'm from West London Community Unite and I'm here to represent um, from our organisation 
disabled people, people with mental health issues and other health issues. I'd like to ask this demonstration for once, I've been on so many in my life, to actually be mindful of the fact that there are people around you who may have hidden disabilities and if we can create some kind of aisle to make sure that these people do not get pushed over and are not misunderstood as being lazy or otherwise that we need disabled people to be included in this demonstration on an equal level. We are all human beings. A lot of us have actually worked in our lives. We are workers as much as we are unemployed. Please be mindful of that. Have a good demonstration. I hope everyone stays safe. Solidarity to Grenfell and um, you know, let's make this demonstration a real push for equality in housing, safe housing, safe homes, safe streets on every level, i.e. health and safety. Thank you very much. Thank you guys, back soon.